So just one thing I'd like to point out, when you are doing a feed plan, uh, the longer you take it out for them, the more days you take it out for, the less accurate it's going to be. Because as I pointed out, there are some assumptions that you've got to make. What's your pasture cover or what's your pasture growth rate going to be over the time that you do the feed plan? So the winter is the period that it's easiest to do the feed plan or to doing the feed plan for the winter is the easiest because our pasture growth rates don't vary that much in the region that we're in from year to year over that winter period. Because generally speaking, uh, we have moisture and the temperatures don't vary all that much. And our pasture growth rates are not very high. So if you even make 20% difference on 10 kilograms per day, it makes bugger all difference over the period. But uh, if you think about what your pasture growth rates may be like next January, they could range from anything from zero to 100. So it's quite difficult to do a pasture plan for a 12 month period, uh, but it's reasonably easy to do one over this winter period. And it actually happens to be the most important time to do a pasture plan. So the first point that came up there was getting quality back. And while some people up in the northern part of the North Island may be saying, well, we ain't got enough pasture, there are other regions in New Zealand where our pasture covers are completely out of control. And it could be a real concern is how do we get these areas back into control so that we have good pasture quality going into lambing? Because if we have a whole lot of tag left there uh, at day of lambing, our quality is going to be down and our lactation is going to be down and our weaning weights are going to be down and we're going to get ourselves into problems this time next year. So it's important that we actually try and get our pasture or some of the area on our farm where the pasture quality is going to be good uh, come seed stock and lambing time next year. So it may be that you have to identify an area of your farm and it may be the area, probably is going to be the area that you're going to seed stock your twin scan ewes onto. You'll have a rough idea from history how many twin scan ewes you're going to have. You've got an idea of what you part of the farm they're going to go on. So that may be the area of the farm that right now you need to concentrate on and try and clean it up, which was a given class of stock that you've got available to do that job. So it's quite important to be able to clean up that area for next spring. Response to of in fertilize or in uh, if it's been very dry when you put the in on it won't be all taken up. It won't disappear. Uh, but your response rate, obviously, as you go into the cooler winter months, won't be as great. So they talk a lot about the amount of nitrogen loss through the lateralisation, et cetera, but don't get carried away with that. It's not very much. So the, ma the majority of the yen that you put on uh, in the autumn will get taken up by the plant, either quite quickly if you've got moisture uh, or certainly over that winter period. The stock numbers over the winter, uh, excess stock on the property now and going into winter, uh, that's a problem because if you end up with low pasture covers in at lambing time, your animal performance is going to be pretty ordinary uh, and you are going to compound the problem uh, next late spring, summer, early autumn because you're going to have a whole lot of particularly lambs, if you've got a reasonably high sheep to cattle ratio, lambs on uh, at low weights. So it may be that you need to be looking at some other options available to try and build up those covers. It may be that you take some animals off to, and go off grazing. Perhaps your ewe hoggets could go grazing somewhere. Uh, these are all decisions that every property will be different and will have a different answer. There's no one answer that we can come up with. But if you do a feed plan and you see that you've got, yep, I've identified a problem, what are some of the options available? Can I buy in supplements? Uh, can I send my hoggets away grazing? Can I send some of the young cattle away grazing to alleviate some of those problems? There was something there about priority stock or feeding stock classes. So what are the priority stock? And in, 
quite a few cases at the moment, particularly in the northern part of the country, those priority stock of those animals that we haven't been able to get to the works or the processing plant. Uh, so we need to make sure that they don't lose weight. We need to make sure that they carry on, if they're up to weight, that they're at maintenance, uh, maintenance feeding uh, because that's where we're going to make our money to try and get, keep them going until such time that we can actually get them off the property. If, they, if you have those stock on hand and they're not up to weight yet, uh, and you've got another six or eight weeks to get them uh, before you're going to be able to kill them, sure, there's ways of in, increasing the weight gain of those animals. Uh, you've obviously got to put reasonably high quality feed into them. You can work out, is it economical to actually go and buy some grain, buy some baleage, buy some supplements, uh, whatever it happens to be, to actually increase those, uh, the growth rates of those animals to try and get them up to or as close as we can to the uh, target weight that we want to achieve. Is there anything else that we missed out or that you can think of there, Mark, that we missed out on? Probably just a couple of notes. I'll pick up on your last point about buying um, uh, that feed that might be available. We're early enough in the season now to have supply compared to middle of a drought in the middle of the winter. Um, the key thing, Tom, there would be to just check what your kilograms of dry matter is, do your costing properly. And I'll just put my truckie hat on. We used to cut a lot of silage around and we get 44 bales on a truck. Some of them used to weigh 500, some weighed 700. And we saw people paying the same amount of money for them. So if you go down to your dry matter on those bales, um, sometimes you're buying some quite expensive feed if you don't work it back to the dry matter. And then as in, your, in the spreadsheet, thinking about the utilisation. So grain is a high utilisation, for example, may appear expensive, but on a kilogram dry matter basis, it may be a cheaper resource than buying some hay or baleage for a certain class of stock. Um, that was sort of an observation. Um, and just those pasture growth rates that we use, or a key point you make in your workshops, is that basically from the 1st of May to the 1st of September, because it's winter, they don't vary much. You know, you go from five to seven or 10 to 12, whereas in the spring or autumn, you could be talking 45 kilograms of dry matter a day. So um, yeah, don't expect in the winter to see massive gains in pasture growth generally. Um, and there's a couple of spots you can find. Those are gonna lead in. We do have them in the feed planning book. And also there is a um, Farmax Lite uh, link on the, the website shows growth rates in your area if you go on the map. So we'll send those out to people. There are a couple of things I think I picked up on, Tom. Right, and so when I'm working out if I'm going to uh, purchase some supplementary feed, I will use grain as the base. So it's pretty easy to get a, uh, a pretty good estimate of what it's going to cost per, and we'll just use barley, uh, what it's cost, going to cost per tonne of barley delivered on my, to my farm. So, and if you work that out, it's a very high quality feed, so it's, it's, it's EME is, is always high. Uh, so you're going to look at 90 to 95% utilisation. So just for example, say the barley, I could land barley on my property for $500 a tonne. Uh, that's around about 50 cents per kilogram of dry matter. Now, how is, are the other options that I have available to me how are they going to stack up against that? Now, it may be that my stock can't eat grain or I'm not used to eating grain, uh, but I use that as the base for my feed uh, plan as far as what I'm going to buy a supplement. So can I buy uh, a 500 kilogram bale of, of baleage that is pretty good ME? So remember, there's also baleage out there that's pretty shit and some stuff that's pretty good. So uh, you're not just buying dry matter, you're buying energy is the main thing. So if it's got a good high ME, uh, then it's worth more than something that's got a, a pretty low or pretty average ME. So you've got to do some homework, it's not easy. No one can make all those decisions for you. You've got to uh, get information. There's plenty of places to get information from uh, and then do a little bit of a, a feed plan and just see where you're placed. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Um, I noticed there's a little bit in the chat bar there going on, um, and we, we are coming to sort of finish. We've picked up on that. 
Um, yeah, I think Warwick, you mentioned about example of things since we've years ago. Growth this summer was it took three years to get past quality back, and I think that's the key thing, Tom, isn't it? As you go through these things, is how quickly you can get your pasture qualities back after certain events. So that's a good point, Warwick. What we'll do now, I think, is we'll, we'll pop back out so that we finish on time. Um, and we've got a bit of a poll we just want to run with you again, and then we'll do a little bit of a wrap-up. If you've got any other um, questions or thoughts, just whack them in the chat bar, and we'll see if we can pick up on them. So, Maria, back to you, and we'll do that sort of exit poll.
So will you do a feed plan going forward? Um, and what, how often will you review your feed plan now? So we may have had some effect, Tom. Wise <laughs> wisdoms from the South. So. Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah. As, as that's doing, I think the key point we set this up was to try and keep things simple. I'm just an East, old East Coast farmer um, and in trying to keep things simple and um, in, in there's some complicated stuff out, but, but you do a bit of planning, you generally have a better outcome. Do you, your comments, Tom? Yeah, uh, you know, if you can just get some information down, it's a, the, 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 the spreadsheets that you're going to send are, are pretty simple. Uh, the majority of stuff, information you've got to put in there, you know off the top of your head. Some of it you may have to go and do a wee bit of effort to get in there. But unless you're prepared to actually do some work, uh, you're going to struggle through. And one of the key messages in feeding animals is uh, it's never, ever efficient to take weight off an animal. It's never efficient. Sometimes we'll do that for our pasture uh, management system to build up quality. We might use our, our breeding cows. But it's never efficient to take weight off an animal. It's going to take you three times the amount of energy to put a kilogram on live weight on an animal as you'll save by taking a kilogram off. So at least three times more to put a kilogram on, more energy, more kilograms of dry matter to put that kilogram of live weight on than you're saving by taking weight off an animal. And if you do something, it's far better than waiting for the shit to happen. Uh, even if you're not quite act, completely accurate in your feed plan, it's going to start building up information, building up knowledge, and every time you do one, you're going to get better at it. Yeah, I like, I like that analogy. Um, um, use Tom in, it's a three to one one to three sort of rule, and uh, that's probably as good as you'll get. It's usually worse than that. Um, and having a plan, I think there's a saying in old farmer of how I used to have that quite often it's better to make a bad decision too early than a good decision too late. It's a bit Irish, but if you think about it, having a bit of a plan, and the key thing what we're trying to share with you here today is this is a live document that you could pull out and uh, update at any time on the journey of the dates you've given. Um, look, I'd like to say thank you so much to Tom. Um, Tom, you always, I think, keep things fairly simple for people, folk like me, um, and most of it goes in. So I thank you very much for that, um, going through those, those bits. Um, those resources we, we've indicated, we will have your contact deals, details we will be sending out to you, the spreadsheets uh, that we, we used. Um, and also, just a bit of a pump, this is a bit of a series. We started off with Dan Bolton from Silfern Farms and Nick Beebe two weeks ago looking at the challenges that could be coming or are coming our way through the supply chain and COVID effects and things. And next, uh, in a fortnight's time, on the 30th of March, we're going to have Ron, Rob McNabb and we'll be doing a similar thing. We'll be looking at some of the sharing tips and trips, uh, trips and tricks and experience on dealing with the sort of challenges that could be on our way, or even in a normal winter. So if you're enjoying this, please do um, connect on to the next one on the 30th of March, and that'll be the third in this series. Um, and a big shout out to our crew um, in the background helping us out as we overcame a few of those little technical difficulties to keep the thing ticking. But yeah, finally, just especially to you, Tom, thank you very much for making yourself available. Jordan.
Have a good week, everybody. Cheers.